an angry ex-wife raided her ex-husband's cryogenics lab, stealing frozen brains. And affordable housing in outer space is now possible as scientists develop cosmic concrete. And the L.A. police often ask people they stop for their Twitter and Facebook information. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. I'm glad to be here on a Monday with you. Let's help you get through the day. An angry ex-wife raided her ex-husband's cryogenics laboratory, stealing frozen brains. This was her form of revenge. This is a crazy story, like right out of a soap opera. You guys watch soap operas? They have the most cockamamie storylines. You're like, that would never happen in real life. Oh no, it happens in real life. She stole some, I'll show you, I'll steal brains that you owned. A scorned wife raided her ex-husband's cryogenics laboratory, stealing the frozen brains of individuals who hoped to be brought back to life at some point in the future. And you know who really suffers this is the families of these people that were hoping one day to see their relative again. That's who really suffers, not the husband, lady. What's this woman's name? Valeria. She's age 59. She grabbed the remains of people who paid thousands of pounds, hoping that they would at one point be resurrected. You guys know about this cryogenic where they freeze your brain with the hopes that at some point in the future on Earth, there will be a technology developed that can bring you back to life, give you another body, and then put your head back on that body. It's basically like a, a future Frankenstein operation that people are betting on. And they pay a lot of money to freeze their parts, freeze their relatives' heads, sometimes entire bodies, right? Famously, Ted Williams, who's a Boston uh, god, I would say, he was cryogenically frozen. One of the first celebrities to do so. At the time, it was very controversial. Now it seems to be less and I think the price has come down. So Ted Williams probably paid tens of thousands of dollars to freeze his, his head and whatnot. But you could probably do it now for half of that. And, and you know, sometimes I consider that. Now, and I can't afford it, but, you know, I could start a Kickstarter for my frozen brain. You guys would give to the Jonesy frozen brain Kickstarter? <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Back to the story. Some of these corpses were from Britain in the United States, and they were stir stored in Valeria's ex-husband's laboratory in Moscow. His name is Danila Medvedev. He's age 41. His laboratory in, is Russia's actually leading cryo-storage facility. So apparently, the ex-wife drained liquid nitrogen from giant flasks containing frozen bodies and grabbed these and some detached human brains as well, then loaded them onto trucks. What are you going to do with these? As soon as you unfreeze them, it's over, right? I mean, they can't be refrozen. The police were called, and they intercepted this cargo of human remains, preserved by, quote, Frankenstein technology, offering humans the chance to come back to life in the future. Uh, so the husband told the media that the police did not actually catch her, unfortunately. She left, taking someone's brain from the cryo storage. What brain did she take? Does she know this person that owns the brain? Is she trying to? Is this a person she had an affair with, and she's going to try and bring him back to life on her own? Wow, I'm just blown away by this story. I can't believe it's real. And, and like, I want to know what is her motivation. Um, well, it says here that they used to share the ownership of this company, but then she went off and started a new company. Uh, and she claims to be the legitimate owner of these human remains from the old company. Oh, it's a business thing. Well, did you get your divorce lawyers on the case? <laughs> Who has custody of the brains? Police are now examining the rival claims while demanding the feuding ex-spouses guarantee the integrity of these frozen corpses and these frozen brains, as well as the bodies of dozens of dogs and cats that owners wanted to bring back to life in the future? Wow, I didn't know you could cryogenically freeze your cat's head. <laughs> this actually makes sense, though. People are crazy about their pets. They spend so much money on them. I read something where it's like, uh, in the United States, something like $50 million a year is spent on Halloween costumes for pets. It just blew my mind. You could solve all of homelessness with $50 million, probably. Maybe not. Maybe not. Anyways... 
Yeah, why am I surprised that people are cryogenically freezing their dog <laughs> for a crap load of money? There are fears, though, that these human remains may have been damaged in the raid. Yeah, you think so? Once you drain them out of that liquid nitrogen, hello? It's a very sensitive organ, the brain. Like, the slightest thing will screw it up. You need to keep it frozen, baby. What are you doing? It says here, uh, that's a quote from the ex-husband. Valeria did not do it well. She just cheated. There was a risk of damage. It is impossible to transport these. You can't transport these in a horizontal position. While attempting to steal the bodies, this nitrogen was spilled. Most of the nitrogen was poured onto the ground. This is awful. There are a lot of orders from different countries, especially from dog and cat owners. <laughs> wow, this is crazy. It says here, the cost of full body cryopreservation is about 26,000 pounds. If you only want to cryo-freeze your brain, it's 11,000 pounds. So maybe the price hasn't come down very much. They freeze these brains and bodies at a minus 196 degrees Celsius. A brain woken in the decades or centuries to come could be implanted in another human body, it is claimed. It says that on their website, but who can be sure? I don't know if you have the money, you know. Might be worth at least a gamble that one day, boom, you come out in the future, 200 years from now, you're on a whole new body. Just come alive right in time for the earth to go up in flames. <laughs> Affordable housing in outer space as scientists develop cosmic concrete. Ooh, it's the sound of science. I got a science article here, guys. Let's see if I can pronounce all the words. Transporting a single brick to Mars can cost, can you guess how much it could cost? Two million American dollars. That's just one brick, guys. How are you going to build a house on Mars, huh? How are you going to build anything, anywhere? Well, this makes the construction of a Martian colony seem very expensive, of course. Well, scientists at the University of Manchester have now developed a way to potentially overcome this problem of construction by creating a concrete-like material made of extraterrestrial dust along with the blood, sweat, and tears of astronauts. <laughs> in the study that was published in Materials Today, a protein from human blood combined with a compound from urine, sweat, and tears could glue together simulated moon or Mars dust or soil to produce a material that's actually stronger than ordinary concrete and will be perfectly suited for construction work in the extraterrestrial environments that lie in our future. The cost of transporting a single brick to Mars is extremely expensive, meaning future Martian colonists can't really bring their materials with them to build things, but they're going to have to utilize resources they can obtain on site for construction and for shelter. And you're really going to need some strong, thick shelter on Mars because of the amount of radiation. The solar radiation will just destroy you in a matter of weeks. So you need something thick. And it sounds to me, though, like this material is um, is more powerful than earthly concrete, which is good, because you're going to need that. I'm going to need four walls. I'm going to need a podcast studio when I'm up there. I'm going to need a place to hide when the aliens land and decide to mass execute all of us for trespassing. <laughs> now they're giving this cosmic concrete a very cool name. Astrocrete. Hey! <laughs> Hilarious. Astro creep. Here's a quote from one of the scientists. Scientists have been trying to develop viable materials to produce concrete-like materials on the surface of Mars for a long time, but we never stopped to think that the answer might actually be inside all of us. They're talking about urine. Using your pee-pee to make high-strength astro creep. Uh, if used as a mortar for sandbags or heat-fused regolith bricks... One crew member could produce enough astrocrete to expand a habitat to support an additional crew member, doubling the housing available with each successive missions. So you get a bunch of people up there pissing on the on the astrocrete, getting it ready for future people to come and make cat videos on your planet. We're going to make cat videos on a new planet, guys. Scientists have investigated the underlying bonding mechanism and found that the blood proteins as well help the structure. So it's our blood and our piss 
<laughs> together with this astrocrete. Very strange. You'd actually be living in a house that you made with your own biofluids. That's outrageous. A house made with your own pee and you're living in it. Who would, who would have thought? In a million years, I never thought I'd be sleeping under a roof made out of my pee-pee. Well, this is certainly promising because I've always been somebody, and I still am to some extent, very anti uh, colonization of Mars because it's just too expensive. And and how do you survive the solar radiation? There's just too much of it. It's just too, it's too hostile of an environment. And I always thought, well, and the expense of terraforming it and or bringing up materials is just, it's not practical at all. Uh, but when you have little inventions like this, little steps, Oh, so now we don't have to bring up our building materials? That's like a, that's a big step in the right direction. I still don't know how you survive that atmosphere up there. That's a whole other story. But maybe, you know, technology seems to be solving these problems one by one by one. Maybe someday we really will be up there. I will be recording Weird AF News from Mars. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Los Angeles police ask people for their Facebook and Twitter account information quite regularly, apparently. The LAPD instructs officers to collect social media account information and email addresses when they interview people that they have detained or stopped, according to documents obtained by a school of law. The school requested public records from the LAPD and other major police departments from major cities, and they found, among other things, that the LAPD in particular, instructs its officers specifically to collect social media account information from those they encounter in person using field interview cards. The LAPD actually initially resisted making these documents available, but then supplied over 6,000 pages to the Justice Center. One such document is a memo from the then LAPD chief from 2015, Instructing officers, when completing a report, officers should ask for a person's social media and email account information and include it in the additional info box. This includes Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook profiles. This may be an unusual policy, even though the LAPD has been doing it for years. Um, I thought I would cover this story because I was unaware of the policy. I haven't. Have I been stopped by LAPD? Yeah, of course. I've gotten traffic tickets, but then I don't remember them asking me for my social media. Maybe there was a place to fill it out in the in a box, but I never gave it to them. I'll give you my email, of course. You know, you're getting the shitty email, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have multiple email accounts. I'm sure most of us do. And one of them is for people who I know are going to spam me. And I'll just use that one for the LAPD. Here you go. You get my Yahoo account, buddy. That's what you're going to get. Now, the article goes into the legalities of all of this. And it says here, while people can refuse to give officers their social media account details, many people may not know their rights and might feel pressured into providing all of this information to the police. A lawyer is quoted as saying, courts have found that stopping individuals and asking for voluntary information doesn't violate the Fourth Amendment and people are free not to respond or walk away. However, depending on the circumstances of a stop, people may not feel that freedom to walk away without responding. They may not know their rights, or they may be hoping to quickly end the encounter with the police by providing information in order to ensure that it doesn't escalate. I'd imagine that happens quite a bit. Well, you're nervous when you're talking to the police. But if you've done nothing wrong, just why would you speak to them? Like, I have no, I want no interaction with police at all, unless I deserve to be interacted, unless I've... Maybe I have information to help save somebody about a crime, then yeah, of course. Or if they, you know, if I did something and they have to talk to me, you know, I try not to do things like that. But in in most instances, I'm like, no, I'm walking away. You know, I'm going to take a police interview. No, thank you. Uh, what's a field interview? It's defined as a brief detainment of an individual, whether on foot or in a vehicle, based on reasonable sus- suspicion for the purpose of determining the individual's identity and resolving the officer's suspicions concerning criminal activity. Yeah, yeah, they do this. They do this to, (laughs) well, a lot of minorities they do this to. They just, they interview you. Um, Well, now you know, you don't, 
you know, it's not required that you give all that information. I thought I would cover the story because it is, to me, controversial, and I just was wondering if if any of you had an opinion on this. Is, is it okay for the police to ask for such details of your life? Like, I don't want them dipping their eyeballs into my social media ever. I don't want them to know what I'm getting into. You know, if you're a felon, yeah, of course, that information, because, or a former felon, you know, maybe, because you kind of want to keep an eye on people, people that, you know, this is just a generalization, but felons also, I mean, are a lot of times repeat offenders when they get out. So you want to just keep an eye on them for what, you know, just for safety. So in those instances, yeah, but if I haven't done anything, I'm not giving you my shit. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Call the show 646-450-2012. Yay! Hey, fellow weirdos, listeners of the show, thank you for checking in on a regular. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful beginning of your week. I hope this episode gave you a chuckle. Maybe you learned a little bit. Um, Did you enjoy the weekend? I hope you did. Football season. Oh, man, I was so excited. My Patriots lost, but whatever. I don't give a damn. I just love, love watching football. It's a very exciting time. Uh, Yeah, I had a wonderful weekend. I hope you did as well. Uh, if you guys would like to reach out to me with the articles that you have or just, just drop me a little message, uh, the email is funnyjones at gmail.com. Uh, also on the Instagram at funnyjones or Twitter at funnyjones as well. Uh, lastly, i just like you to, if you had a moment, check out the Patreon, which is a way to support the show. Um, keep the show going. Help Jonesy uh, keep the electricity and uh, try and maintain my caffeine levels as well. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, how much do I spend a month on caffeine? You don't even want to know. Uh, so to join the Patreon, it's patreon.com slash weirdafnews. And it's for as little as two bucks a month, which is like buying Jonesy a, a shot of espresso. Why wouldn't you buy me a shot of espresso per month? Of course. Uh, you can join the Patreon and you actually get extra content. So, uh, And I put some things in there quite often. Uh, just yesterday and this morning. Uh, put stuff in there, so... Yeah, the Patreon's a really cool thing. Extra weird AF content. If you like the show, you'll like the stuff that's in there. And you get that good feeling knowing that you're supporting a a five-day-a-week weird news show that's run by just one dude in a closet. So check it out. Patreon.com slash weirdafnews. I love you. See you tomorrow.